All right, let me preface this video by stating that big tech companies are not fair when it comes to censorship. They censor the far right, but they don't censor at all the far left. In fact, they not only allow the far left to thrive, they encourage it. And in some cases, they even promote it. And then there are other places where you see it promoted and encouraged. Universities, human resources departments and workplaces, and even mainstream media. They encourage and, in some cases, promote the far left. No, this is not acceptable, but it's the reality we live in. Having said that, do you feel that defending white nationalists and defending far-right ideologues when they get banned from YouTube is helping your cause when it comes to fighting online censorship? I mean, I understand your principles. If YouTube bans far-rightists, who are they going to ban next? It's a good question. But if you don't want YouTube to come after you, why would you go out of your way to put yourselves in Google's crosshairs? Why would you purposely make your position harder to defend? Why not focus your outrage at when people who aren't far right get banned? Why not focus on those people? I view this similarly to how I look at Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter defends people of color no matter what they've done. They'll defend violent criminals under principle. They'll essentially state that people of color need to stand together no matter what. You know, no snitches, right? They would get a lot more support behind them if they only defended innocent people. But their principles make them do otherwise. Now, I'm certainly not saying that you shouldn't be concerned over far-right ideologues being banned. But why would you go out of your way to publicly defend them on YouTube? Do you realize how much data Google gathers about their users? Do you realize that Google and other companies that look at this data don't care about what your real beliefs are and real views are? Let's look at this association map from last year that pissed off a lot of people. You can hate on this image all you want, but it's based on raw data. And if you actually read the text on the image, it says, from mainstream versions of libertarianism and conservatism to overt white nationalism. This is not a map that specifically talks about white nationalists and far-rightists, though it does include them. It does show associations. There are people who are on this map who are not on the right, but they're put into that category anyway. These people are being judged on what they complain about and what they seem to support in their videos, based off of the data that they grab. That's why people like Tim Pool and Joe Rogan are included in this graphic, regardless of if it's accurate. They also look at comment sections. They build databases of each user, based on what they give thumbs up to and thumbs down to, based on what videos they watch the most, Again, based on the comments that are made, based on how often and what people click on on the sidebar, on the, the recommended part of the sidebar, based on what people search for on all of Google's products, based on a whole bunch of things. If you go out of your way to defend and support far-right ideologues because of your principles, do you really think that Google and other companies that look at this data are going to care if you're not actually a far-right ideologue? Do you think Google's algorithms are going to care? Yeah, I mean, why would you go out of your way to put yourself in Google's crosshairs? How in the world do you think this helps stop Google from censoring people? It doesn't make any sense to me. If I was running YouTube, which is a ridiculous notion, but, you know, if I was running YouTube, I certainly wouldn't outright ban far-left and far-right ideologues, but I would put their videos in a limited state. I would put a disclaimer below their video, like what you find when you go to, uh, you know, Russia Today, and they, they put this thing saying this is funded by the Russian government, right? Yeah, I would put a disclaimer below the video that says, yes, this is uh, far-extremist propaganda, 
And I would disallow people to mirror those videos, people who are trying to get around the limited state. But that's neither here nor there. I'm obviously not going to be in that position. But I felt I needed to clarify that in case people somehow felt that I support Google's actions. Having said that, I find it preposterous when people try to claim that anti-far-left, anti-SJW, and right-wing viewpoints aren't being heard. That their message just isn't getting out there. That everything, even slightly right-wing, is being silenced. It's laughable. Sorry. It's laughable. When it comes to social commentary on YouTube, those kinds of videos are the ones that get the most views, they get the most thumbs up, they, met, they get the most positive comments, or comments in support in one way or another. If it's a left-wing social commentary video that gets a lot of views, it also gets tons of thumbs downs, it gets tons of nasty comments, and don't get me wrong, in, in, in a lot of those videos deserve it. But this also applies to assorted entertainment videos, commercials, movie trailers that have a left-wing tilt. Lots of views, but tons of thumbs down and nasty comments. Do you think those ratios are ignored? Most certainly not. Other types of videos get a lot more views for the most part. Music videos, how-to videos, gaming videos, unboxing videos best of videos, product review videos, that sort of thing. But even with those types of videos, if they're popular and have a left-wing tilt, especially anything that has to do with intersectionality, intersectionality, they get massive thumbs down and tons of negative comments. And in many cases, or one could even say in most cases, rightly so. But to claim that opposing voices to the far left aren't being heard? It just doesn't make any sense. And to claim that because far-rightists are being banned on the platform, that means that reasonable right-wing viewpoints are being silenced? It doesn't make any sense either. At least not unless you think that far-right ideologues and people like Alex Jones reflect mainstream conservatism. I hope that's not what you're saying. I doubt that's what you're saying. But if you're going to stand up for your principles regarding free speech, like Black Lives Matter stands up for their principles, don't act all surprised and outraged when it has an undesirable outcome. And don't delude yourself into thinking that the goal of your actions are to stop online censorship. If you want to make change, you have to be smart about it. Just saying. Ooh.